A new national Fox News poll shows Hillary Clinton increasing her lead over Donald Trump. The poll of likely voters conducted Monday through yesterday shows Clinton with a seven-point lead over Trump, 45 to 38. A week ago, Clinton's lead in the same poll was only two points. Other polling shows an even more dire situation for Donald Trump, especially in various scenarios, including the mythical but fascinating case of what would happen if only women voted in this election. That's just one of the projections from Nate Silver, statist statistician and founder and editor-in-chief of 538.com. He joins me now. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you. So these most recent allegations against Donald Trump, yeah. how do they affect the race, you think, and where do they affect the race the most? I mean, what we know is that Trump came out of the first debate going from a pretty close race to trailing Clinton by by four or five points, and that lead has grown to maybe six or seven points. The Fox News poll, in fact, is kind of right on the mark with where the average poll is. Mm -hmm. Because the news happens so fast, rapid fire, it's a little hard to say exactly what triggers what. I mean, polls also show Clinton did better in the second debate, although by a narrower margin. Um, but when Trump is running in the wrong direction, even just a little bit in the wrong direction, when time is running out, then his odds begin to, to, to plummet. So let's take a look at the map uh, that sort of where this is affecting him the most. Yeah, so at this point, when you have a six or seven point lead, that's about the margin by which Barack Obama won in 2008, more than 2012. So therefore... You're saying it right now that Hillary Clinton has an 85.9% chance of winning? 85% chance. So and it's Donald not, Trump has a 14.1%. It's not nothing, right? If you play a game of Russian roulette, then you have a 16% a chance of losing. So, um, so it's not over yet. But in terms of the map, it's hard to find that many swing state polls where Trump's ahead, with some exceptions. Ohio is a state where, uh, Ohio could go to Trump, okay. for example. Iowa, um, the last really good poll we have there from Seltzer and company had Trump ahead. And Arizona is a little bit tenuous for Clinton, not a state's gone Republican since, or not Democratic since 96. But she doesn't need any of those states. She also doesn't need Florida, she doesn't need North Carolina. Um, she's ahead in enough states everywhere else, doesn't need Nevada, by the way, although she's up in most of the polls there. So it's a pretty robust lead right now, and the race could easily tighten. Races often tighten down the stretch run. Um, but it's hard to find any polls where Trump is ahead, let alone close, in Pennsylvania, in Colorado, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Michigan. Um, so Clinton has a pretty formidable electoral college lead. You also did an interesting thing uh, at 530 where you looked at sort of men and, and women, if only men were voting, if only women were voting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not surprising we have a big gender split in this electorate, but to just think about how it looks on the map. So you start out with an electorate where you only have women voting, and Clinton's winning by about 15 points among women. So this is what a 15-point landslide would look like. In fact, there are some states, Utah, for example, some new polling there suggests Utah might even be a competitive state. Mm -hmm. um, if you flip this around, though, and look at what happens if only wow. men voted, um, Clinton's only winning up in the Northeast, not even New Hampshire, not even Maine, um, and the West Coast, and these little islands in Illinois and New Mexico. So, um, so the gender gap is larger than it was in 2012. Trump is doing roughly as well as Mitt Romney did among men, um, but it's women who are tilting this toward being, at this point, a pretty significant Clinton lead. And if the election was held today? If the election were held today, then you would think, I mean, like I said, that CNN poll, or the Fox News poll, rather, a six or seven point advantage. And, and look, polls can be off. Um, but we're at the point now where if polls were off by as much as the Brexit polls were, which Trump talks about, then Clinton would still win by, by three points. So it would look more like Obama 12 than Obama 08. So if you're Trump, you have to think of this in kind of stages. You can't get six or seven points back overnight. You have to think about, boy, can I have a stronger third debate, shave a couple of points off that lead, mm -hmm. then can I close a little bit, and then you maybe are a couple of points behind on election day, but, but close enough for, the, for a Brexit-type polling it, error. I mean, is it too late for Donald Trump to stage a comeback? Um, I think he has to have multiple things go right. I don't think there's any, it's very rare you have one political event shift the polls by seven points all by itself. You could have a case where he has a good third debate and has some momentum going in. Maybe Clinton's supporters become complacent and don't turn out as much, and there are years when the polls are off. I think you have a graphic on the, some of these polls, right? Yeah, so this is a comparison of where the polls were now in mid-October to where you ended up eventually. So you have years like 2008, for example, where the polls right now had Obama up by seven points. That's what he won by. 2004, Bush was ahead in the polls. But you have some years where there's a big swing. So for example, um, is a year where Ronald Reagan only up by two or three points over Jimmy Carter and wound up winning by, by 10 mm -hmm. or 11 points, 10 points 
in the end. That's about a seven point swing. That's what Trump would need. You see 92 and 96 in both those years, Bill Clinton, um, Bill Clinton, uh, his deficit narrowed or advantage narrowed down the stretch run. What you don't see though is any races that really cross the line. In 2000, um, Al Gore was actually behind in the popular vote at polls at this point in time. And in fact, on election day, he won the popular vote, still lost the electoral college. So mm. you don't have a big error, but you do know there's still some movement in the polls. The one thing Trump potentially could take advantage of is that you still have a lot of undecided and third party voters. Clinton's at about 45%. That's an okay number. It's not a great number. Mm -hmm. um, you probably need to get in the high 40s to be to a point where you'd clinch the election. So she still has a little bit more work to do, but Trump has a gargantuan amount of work to do. That's fascinating to look at. Uh, Nate Silver, Nate, thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. You.